bring your shouting clothes this morning. Huh? If not, you can go home and change clothes, put your shouting clothes on, and come back and rejoin us. Huh? And come back and rejoin us. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to talk to you this morning about the main reason. Say the main reason. The main reason Jesus came. It seemed to me like a lot of people lose their focus this time of year. Get distracted. Huh? Get distracted by all the hustle and the bustle and the gift wrapping and the gift shopping and the spending. Amen. We must remember what this time is really all about. Huh? And why Jesus really came. And the fact that he's coming back. I said he's coming back. Hallelujah. He's coming back for his people. Amen. Whose sins have been washed in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. If your sins have been washed in the blood, he's coming back for you. Amen. He's coming back for those who live here in Mattoon. Hallelujah. Whose sins have been washed in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Go with me, please, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. And uh, let's start reading in verse 7. Luke chapter 2 and verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son. What's his name? Huh? What's his name? I'll say his name again. Doesn't that sound sweet? There's power in that name. I said there's power in that name. You can be the worst sinner on the face of the earth. You can be lying on your deathbed. Get ready to take your last breath. And call on that name in faith and get saved. And we'll see you in heaven. Even though you were the, you were the worst sinner, it doesn't matter. As long as you call on his name before it's too late. Huh? You got to make sure you call on his name, though. Amen. In faith. In faith. Praise God. She brought forth her firstborn son. And wrapped him in swaddling clothes. And laid him in a manger. Because there was no room for them in the inn. It does not say that they couldn't afford a hotel. Because he was broke. That's what religion has come up with. Not what the Bible says at all. Read your Bible. They, were, they, they wanted to check him into the Holiday Inn, but they were booked up. Probably Super Bowl Sunday or something like that. I don't know. But they were booked up. There's no room for him in the inn. Amen. It's amazing to me how that religion will add to the Bible or take from the Bible or take a scripture out of context and build an entire doctrine around it. And use that doctrine to hold people in bondage. Mm. My, my, my. I said, my, my, my. Thank God I've been set free. How many have been set free from religion and from tradition? Huh? You've been set free from all that. And now you have a relationship with Jesus. Amen. Verse 8. And they were in the same country. Shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch for their flock by night. You know, can I say something? You know, a lot of pastors won't wear a suit anymore. They want to blend in with the people. Oh, yeah. I've had to tell me that. I want to blend in. Well, should I say this, Lord, or not? Should I say it? 
Nobody said say it. Say it. Should I say it? I thought that the shepherd was supposed to lead the sheep, not blend in with the sheep. Huh? Now, I'm not opposed to, you know, being casual, dressing casual, all that. That's fine. But I don't do this to impress people. I do this to please the Lord. So I do this to please the Lord. I'm in the ministry to serve him and to please him and to not obey men. Huh? Yeah. It's okay to wear a tie. Nothing wrong with that. Thank you for your enthusiasm. They were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field. You know, the sheep don't mind following a shepherd when he knows who he is and knows what he has in Christ and is not afraid and is not intimidated. Hello? And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. Say, fear not. You know, God never admonishes his children to fear. Now, we should have a fear of the Lord, but it's not a spirit of fear where you're afraid of him. It's a reverential fear where you reverence him and you respect him and you honor him and you submit to him. Yet you're not afraid of him, but you just honor his majesty. You respect his goodness and what he has done for us. Hmm? Amen. Now what did this angel of the Lord say? Fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings. Oh, there it is right there. Good tidings. Say good tidings. Now, what does good tidings mean? It means good news. This angel of the Lord was sent by God to make an announcement. He made an announcement. Fear not. Don't be troubled by what you see happening on the earth. Don't be troubled by what you hear or by what you see in the news. Don't be troubled. I've come to bring you good news. Say good news. Now listen. Good tidings or good news of great joy. Then say joy. It says great joy. Let me say something right here. Religion always brings bondage. People who are religious, and, and you see them, they, they don't smile. They're usually sad. Usually have a negative report. Almost always. They'll quote scripture. But they'll use scripture to, to get you straightened out. And to put you in bondage. See, that's religion. Oh, yeah. I bump into him every now and then. I, I know that spirit very well. Amen. I'm very familiar with that spirit. And I resist it whenever it's operating against me. I resist it. I don't resist the person per se, but I resist that demon that's influencing their mind, their actions, and their behavior. I'm not going to use any demon, I'm not going to allow any demon to use a scripture to put me back in bondage. Not when Jesus came to set me free. Jesus came to be free, to bring freedom and to bring liberty and to bring victory. The angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings or good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. Well, that would include us here in Matt Toon, wouldn't it? I say, wouldn't it? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. You know, 
You know the Greek word, Greek word for Savior there means deliverer? He's our deliverer. In the Old Testament, Moses was the deliverer. In the New Testament, Jesus is our deliverer. Amen? Hallelujah. He's our deliverer. He's our Savior. He's our healer. He's our financier. He's our lawyer. He's our doctor. He's all those things to me. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ. Say Christ. Christ the Lord. And Christ is not Jesus' last name. He had one name. His name is Jesus. Amen. Jesus is his name. Christ is who he is. The anointed one. Amen. You see, the Christmas story is not a religious celebration. It is not. There's a lot of revelation in these scriptures here that I'm reading to you. A lot of revelation there. Enough to set you free from bondage. Which, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly, say suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. Glory to God. Praising God and saying, what were they saying? Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, peace. This is a declaration being made by God Almighty through this angel of the Lord, through the angel of the Lord. Peace, goodwill, say goodwill, goodwill toward men. Hallelujah. Now, notice here in verse 10, this angel made an announcement that I bring you good tidings or good news of great joy. Now, what is this good news that he's referring to here? Because it's the good news he's referring to that's going to bring great joy. Say great joy. Well, notice in verse 18, I'm sorry, 14, he concluded the announcement by saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Not goodwill among men, but goodwill toward men. What is this angel declaring here? He's declaring here that the war between heaven and earth is over. That the Savior has come. The Deliverer has come. And he's a bridge between God and men. He's saying that God now has reached out to man through Jesus and has given men the opportunity to have a relationship with with God Almighty through Jesus Christ. Hmm. I said, hmm. Isn't that good news? So, we can say it like this. God is not mad at man like religion has portrayed him to be. God is not sitting in heaven with a spiritual fly swatter waiting for you to make a mistake, and then you swatch you real good. Say, you idiot, why'd you do that? What, you dummy? That's religion. That's not who God is. That's how he's been portrayed by religious people. But that's not who God is. I said, that's not who God is? Man, because of Jesus, can now have a relationship with God. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to know you. He wants to become your best friend. He wants to hang out with you. He wants to run around with you. He wants to love on you. He wants to take you to heaven with him and live with him for all eternity. And all he needs from you is to say yes to him. Is to say yes to his son. Can you say amen to that? Now, go 
with me, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And uh, look at verse 17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verse 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself. How? By Jesus Christ. He is our high priest. Now, I'm the priest of this house. But Jesus is the high priest of the body of Christ. Jesus is our chief shepherd. He's the great shepherd. He's the good shepherd. And I'm the under shepherd. I lead his flock here at Liberty under his guidance and his direction. So I stay submitted to him. Because he's the boss here. He's the boss. We do what he says to do. Can you say amen to that? And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. This ministry is given to every member of the body of Christ. You are in the ministry. If you're born again, you're in the ministry right now. You don't got to wait for a prophecy or for a word from the Lord. He's already given you a word in, in, the, in the word of God. You're in the ministry. You, you've been called to the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Oh, glory. The world has already been reconciled unto God. All they got to do is simply receive his son and activate it. Amen. Not imputing. Say not imputing. Not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, verse 20, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you for us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Can you say amen to that? So, we're going to be telling sinners, God's not mad at you. He's not holding your trespasses against you. Be ye reconciled to God. Amen. Now, it was at the cross. It was at the cross that Jesus bore our sins. Now, listen to this. And triumphed over the enemy that's arrayed against us. Mm, 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 mm. Go to um, Colossians, please, chapter 2. At the cross, Jesus bore our sins and triumphed over the enemy. Amen? Colossians chapter 2. Look at verse 13. And you being dead in your sins... And the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together, that means made alive with him, having forgiven you how many trespasses? All trespasses. Not one left out, right? Blotting out, verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was arrayed against us, which was contrary to us or opposing us. And took it out of the way. Now listen to this. Nailing it to our cross? No. Nailing it to his cross. The cross of Christ. Now look at verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing <coughs> over them in it. What's he saying here? He's saying this. That our trespasses that were arrayed against us were nailed to his cross. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? So Jesus canceled 
all of our trespasses by nailing them to his cross and triumphed over every demon, every devil, every evil spirit that's opposing you and trying to stop you. Can you say amen to that? And so now, Jesus has given us the victory. Now go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And look at 50, verse 55. O oh, death, words I sting. O oh, grave, words I have victory. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But, verse 57, but thanks be to God. Say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory. You see that in your Bible? Which giveth us the victory. No, he's not going to do it. He's already done it. Amen. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus is not trying to give you the victory. Jesus has already given us the victory. Can you say amen to that? And so now, it's my job to accept it. It's my job to confess it. It's my job to act on that. Amen? That's what is going to implement his victory. Is when I believe it, I receive it, I confess it, and I act on it. In other words, I act like it's so in my life. Can you say amen to that? Now then. Not only has he given us, given us a victory, he's given us faith, faith in which to implement his victory. You know that? He's given us faith to implement his victory. You may say, well, I just wish I had more faith. Well, read your Bible. The word says that God's given to every man, that includes you, the measure of faith. Now, you have to believe that. You have to receive that. You have to confess that. That I have, say this, say, I have the faith of God residing on the inside of me. Say that. Say the faith that I have came from God Almighty. He gave it to me when I got born again. Therefore, I have a measure of his faith. It is the God kind of faith. Now go to um, 1 John. Chapter 5, please. 1 John chapter 5. And um, look at verse 4. It says, For whatsoever is born of God. Well, are you born of God? Hmm? You are. If, you're, if Jesus is your Lord, you're born of God. Amen. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. You see that in your Bible? Think about that now. God is declaring you a world overcomer. He sees you as an overcomer. He's declaring you as a world overcomer. Now, you've got to see yourself as such. You've got to see yourself as a world overcomer. Say this. Say, I'm a world overcomer. Say, God made me that way. So I accept it, I believe it, I receive it, and I confess it. That I am a world overcomer in Jesus' name. Okay, verse 4 again. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory. Glory to God, here it is, that Overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen. So it's your faith in God when you act on it that implements his victory. 
that Jesus won for you at the cross. Amen? This is why he came. He didn't come to the earth to make you religious. He came to the earth to, the earth to give you a relationship with God. He came to the earth to bring freedom and liberty from bondage and from religion. Religion is a very hard taskmaster. It's hard. It's mean. People who are religious, they're mean. They'll argue with you. They'll use scripture to, to whip you and to beat you and to and all that kind of stuff. And that's what, that is religion. Amen. But what did the Apostle Paul say? He said that God has made us able ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit that God gives, gives life. And life more abundantly, praise God. Amen. So, <laughs> you and I have mountain moving faith residing on the inside of us. Amen. You have faith right now to overcome whatever the devil or this old world throws at you. Amen. In these end times that we are living in. Amen. It will require faith to live victoriously in these end times. You can't be religious and live victoriously in these end times. You must be a man or woman of faith. Amen. Faith is the force that will empower you and propel you through these end times in victory. Amen. It's faith that does that. I say it's faith that does that. Amen. And when Jesus returns, I believe he's coming back. Amen. He's coming back. Now, I know many Christians say they believe that, but the lifestyle is not reflected. They don't really believe it. They're lying about it. Because when you believe he's coming back soon, your lifestyle will line up with what you believe. Amen. Tell you what. Go with me, please. Go with me, please, to 1 Thessalonians. It's not in my notes. <laughs> it's not in my notes. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Look at verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Verse 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Verse 4, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, if that day should overtake you as the thief. Ye are all the children of light. Say, I'm a child of light. And children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Verse 6, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be what? Sober. That's not talking there about not getting drunk, although it includes that. It does include that. If you're going out getting drunk, I've got two words for you as your pastor. Stop it. Amen? This here is talking about where it says, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. It means don't become intoxicated with the things of this world. Too many Christians are way too worldly. I see it on Facebook all the time. Way too worldly. Christian people that go to church are too worldly. Too much of the world in them and not the word in them. What's coming out of your mouth when you're at home, when you're at the workplace, when you're driving to the supermarket? What's coming out of your mouth, the world or the word? Say, I love you, Pastor. Many Christians are not ready for the Lord to return. Make sure you are. My job is to ready you for the rapture and not play around with this thing. I said not play around with this thing. 
Get the world out of you and get the word in you. It's not in my notes, so I'm just, just hush. And just say, God bless him, Lord. God bless him. He's flowing. He's flowing. Say, he's, say Pastor's flowing. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of what? Breastplate of what? Faith. Say faith. And look, notice it mentions faith first. Why? Faith is the most important message you can hear in these last days. Somebody said, well, I think love is. No, it's not. You can't walk in love without faith. People that are carnal don't walk in love. They're worldly and they're carnal. And they have no faith. They're in unbelief. It takes faith to walk in love. You can't love people that are unlovable without faith. If somebody tells you off, it takes faith to forgive them. It takes faith to stay in the spirit and not get in the flesh when somebody wants to argue with you. I was sinking feeling when I said that. Huh? Huh? Say, I love you, Pastor. <clears throat> Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, releasing our faith in the love of God. We'll put you over in, the last, in these last days. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. And the word salvation there means to complete and make final everything you've been redeemed from. Having an expectation of freedom coming to you from the things that the curse is trying to bring upon you. Hallelujah. Verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. You've not been appointed to go through the wrath is coming. The wrath is coming. The church will be gone. Let's pray you're gone. You don't want to be left behind. You want to go in the first load. There'll be, no, there'll be another rapture, but you don't want to be left behind and have to wait and go through some things you could have avoided if you listened to, if you just would have listened to your pastor. Say, I love you, Pastor. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. No, the church will not be here when the great tribulation hits. When those seven years tribulation hit, the church is going to be gone. We're going to be in heaven for seven years and then come back to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. And make sure you go with your pastor. Don't be rebellious and be left behind. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, when Jesus Christ returned, he's coming back. He came, was born in a manger, lived a sinless life, went to the cross as a spotless, sinless, perfect Lamb of God, was raised from the dead to give us victory, and now he's about to come back. And when he returns to the earth, the thing he's going to be looking for is faith. Faith. Go to Luke chapter 18, please. We're going to be looking for faith. Now look at verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear along with them? Verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Say speedily. That means quickly. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall you find faith on the earth. Make sure you're walking, living by faith. You know, this here is a word of faith church. Do you know that? Because just because you attend a faith church does not mean you're living by faith. It's got to be personal. It's got to be personal. So let's get all the wokeness and all the worldness out of our lives. Let's get the word in us. Let's get the word in us. Amen. If you're on Facebook, start sharing the word. Start sharing the word. Get back to getting on your pastor's posts again. That's no amens there. <laughs> Come on now. 
Stay humble. Stay submitted. Stay committed. Stay dedicated. Stay determined. Hallelujah. You can go all the way with God. You're going to live long and finish strong. Not finish your life with a whimper and barely make it across the finish line. Grace will equip you to finish the race. Can you say amen to that? Now remember, in closing, faith has a voice. If you're truly living by faith, then you need to be saying some things. You need to be saying and declaring what God has already said. Decreeing what God has already said. Hallelujah. Last scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe, say I believed, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore we speak. Amen. So, begin to declare and to decree what God has said to you, to you in his word. Amen. I'm declaring and decreeing in the name of Jesus that 2025 is going to be your greatest year. That breakthrough is going to happen in your life like never before in this new year in Jesus' name that's coming upon us. Hallelujah. And these pews are going to fill up in Jesus' name. I declare it. I decree it. I say it. In Jesus. You can't just think it. You can't just believe it. you got to say it. You gotta have the boldness and the audacity to say what God has said in His Word. The righteous are bold, not timid, bold as a lion. Hallelujah. Say what God has said. Declare what God has said. Decree what God has said. Amen. And I declare in the name of Jesus that Dr. Scott Selvage shall experience a quick and complete recovery in Jesus' name. What the devil meant for evil. God's going to turn it around and bring goodness out of it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I declare that. And I decree that. And that the money will come to take care of all the bills that are, that are coming in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, let's stand up, please. I've uh, preached long enough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, that, so when Jesus returns to the earth, the thing that he's going to be looking for and is looking for is a never quit, never give up, a persistent faith. Amen. Glory to God. And what impresses God is when someone who's facing inevitable defeat Stands up and boldly declares who he is. Boldly declares what he has. Boldly declares he's coming out in Jesus' name. Without the smell of smoke. Victoriously in Jesus' name.